Hi guys, something a little bit different uh, today. I've had a lot of people recently ask me about my uh, big band score videos and what sort of sample libraries I'm using, what sort of template I'm using for those um, kind of audio demos that go along with the score. Um, and I've just recently kind of polished up my 2021 uh, template. I, I do a new one each year with kind of changes of sample libraries and things that I've, that I've got. Um, and I just thought maybe I should just run through it on a few videos and just show you what I'm using sample library wise, where everything's getting rooted, uh, what sort of reverbs I'm using for kind of room simulation and all that sort of stuff. So over the course of a few videos, I'm go, going to go through each section. So this first video is going to be about the, the reeds. So not just the saxophones, but flutes and clarinets and that sort of auxiliary woodwind as well. Um, and then a later one on trumpets, trombones, uh, and some solo instruments, the rhythm section, and then uh, some kind of video stuff on the mixing, so the, the final mix that I put together at the end um, with these sample libraries. So today I'm just going to look at the uh, template as a whole, and then also look at the reed section and the sample I was using for the saxes, the flutes, and the clarinets. So if we dive over into Logic here, I've got my my template open, um, and it opens by default here with uh, my sections kind of uh, collapsed here, um, but ready to go with the Keyscape piano, which sounds a bit like this. And that's ready for me to start sketching, uh, start arranging, um, and um, maybe even just play the piano part to then build on with the other sections later. Uh, and this is, um, I will very quickly show you, this is just the Keyscape um, C7, it's kind of the Keyscape Grand, it loads up, um, ready to go. I think it's just the Yamaha. C7. Um, but as I say, we're not here for the rhythm section today. We are looking at the first section, which is the reeds. Now, the reeds um, in my template is a standard setup. We've got alto one, alto two, tenor one, tenor two, and the barrier. And then I have flutes one to four to double the two altos and the two tenors. And then uh, also a clarinet patch, uh, which can be duplicated to create a clarinet section, but for now it's just there so that I have something to, to duplicate and copy. Um, so opening up the reeds. Here we have um, Alto 1, and I'm mainly using Contact and Keyscape for this template. Contact for basically all the instruments, and then um, Keyscape for the piano and the roads. Uh, there is also a different drum kit for the kind of party pop um, sets, uh, but we'll, we will get onto that with the rhythm section. So if I open up here, Alto 1, this is the Project Sam Swing More library, um, which is a brilliant, brilliant library. I'd highly recommend if you're just getting started with this kind of style of virtual arranging, um, this library will get you started in the best way possible. There is everything, there's all the saxophones, there's all the uh, trumpets, trombones, all the rhythm section, as well as some extras like ukuleles, mandolins, clarinets. Um, I believe, that, I think there's even um, a couple of different kind of guitars in there as well. Um, and to the drum kit and smaller percussion, all sorts of stuff. And it, it all sounds great. It's great out of the box um, and ready to go. This um, I use for the saxophones for a lot of the uh, rhythm section as well. Um, not so much for the trumpets and trombones anymore. I did used to, but I found some new libraries for those, which we will get onto. So this is the alto sax patch. Now Project Sam's, uh, their swing more, they don't have alto one, alto two, tenor one, tenor two, it's just alto and tenor, which is fine. Uh, they sound great, um, but you don't have those separate parts for each instrument in the section. So what I do is I kind of pan out the altos left and right, um, and then kind of play a little bit with this dial here, which just changes some of the mic positions to give them both uh, a separate sort of sound to separate them a little more. Um, so this is how they sound. This is the staccato um, articulation for the alto saxophones. It's a very live sound, it's great. Um, and that kind of close stage dial in the middle really helps to, uh, to alter that um, if that's not quite the sound you're looking for. The Mercatos.
nice and the sustains and that's very velocity um sensitive actually um keyboard is quite uh, sensitive enough to get those velocities nice and smooth but that's something you'd go in and key in afterwards anyway and then the um, crescendos and falls here so the lower velocities will um, give you a kind of FP 40 piano crescendo yeah. and the higher velocities are the falls um, and they're great they work really well um, and fit really well into the section that I've been building. Now, what I will say is with the saxophones, what I'm doing uh, is very much a scratch kind of sound here because I will go and record the saxophones afterwards and make the section up myself. Uh, so this is very much a temporary kind of thing for now um, before I then go in and record the sax section live. And that's as human as I can make it, of course, because uh, there is a real person <laughs> playing each one of those parts. The barry sax, sorry, I do not have a barry sax, so that is still the swing more, but melded into the section of four real sax players. Uh, sounds great, works really well. So that's your alto. Uh, you've got a bunch of these other kind of settings, but we'll have a look at those on the other saxophones as we move through. As I say, alto two has got the same patch. It's exactly the same, just a slight change on the mic uh, positioning. And as you can see here, it is panned slightly further over to the right. So let's have a look at the tenors. Tenor one, I've got very, looks looks very, very similar. It's the same. We've got staccatos. Like that. Um, oh, I did a key switch there. Uh, Mercato. Nice and sustains. It's a lovely kind of breathy subtone sort of sound to that. Uh, very kind of traditional, very classic big band sound. Lovely. And then the falls. Ah, so this is <laughs> I've got the speed dial down here to 25%. If I put that back up to 100 percent it's very useful this speed dial. If I've got faster arrangements um, and you want the falls to hit bah, like that, um, then you will need to use that and kind of dial that up. So that this is 100% speed, the falls there. Um, and then if I dial that up to 200%, um, which is rather extreme, um, but for these kind of more party set funk energy tracks, it can be useful to have that kind of boom, fall. And as before, the tenor two is just the same patch, um, panned, to the other side and the mic positioning is altered slightly. So the fifth saxophone of the section. This is the Barry Sax patch, which again is swing more um, and sounds great. Let's just get the staccato articulation up. Works really well. Um, Mercato, just a little bit longer. sustain which I have to say I don't use an awful lot I think the Mercato kind of does the job for lengths there um, all the same settings the reverb on these saxophones I've actually turned it off um, so that I can more accurately place them in this uh, kind of virtual room that I set up for the big band so that's off um, but the close and stage mic positioning I play around with quite a bit to just get a sense of a different kind of sound for each saxophone and there you have it. They are the five saxophones in that section. Um, and moving on to the flutes, we'll come back to the key switches. Um, the flutes, I have um, another contact library. This is uh, Passion Flute, which is uh, is great. It's the Orange Tree Samples uh, flute. It's, it's brilliant. Um, I spent a long, long time looking for a flute library that wasn't a classical flute library. It was more of a pop funk jazz kind of flute library and this does that job perfectly so this um the higher velocities have a, a biting sort of sound um almost like an overblown texture um and it just sounds great this is the flute one track on um in, in the template it sounds a little bit like this
brilliant. It's just another world compared to what I was using before. Um, it's a it's a great great kind of jazz sound for for, for this big band stuff. Um, and I have just that same library four times. Um, but around here, I am selecting different microphones. Uh, you have kind of two close mics, a further away kind of um, omni uh, mid mic, um, and then these room mics too. But I, I'm mixing and matching between those just to make sure that each flute does have a different sound. Um, and all together, they work really well. They sound sound uh, sound really cool. Um, and yeah, that's the flute library. It's Fairly simple. Um, it doesn't have legato, just longs and kind of shorts on your release, based on your release, but um, it, it does the job. It sounds fantastic. Uh, really handy as well for arranging this perform tab on here. If you um, play a long note, you see the red circle moves down. Now, when that red circle reaches the end, reaches the end, that means the player would ordinarily have run out of breath. Now it will keep playing, but it can give you a sense of where that should be for for um, standard kind of breath length for for a flute player. Now I don't I do play woodwinds. Don't actually play flute um, ordinarily, so I, I'm not completely sourced on that sort of thing. So it's really useful to have that. Um, and uh, I wouldn't say I look at that for everything, but if there's anything I'm just not sure about, wondering if that's possible, that is perfect. It works really well. So that's the passion flute library, um, and then on. On the bottom here, this last one is the clarinet, and I will, as I say, I will use this and duplicate it as needed um, to create a section. Uh, but as I don't do that all that often, it's just there, uh, deactivated, just for when I do. One thing to say, actually, in in my sessions, I purge all the samples um, and save that template, so that when I open the template, no samples are loaded, nothing, because otherwise it's Chaos. Everything's loading at once. Uh, I've got loads of contact instances. Here it will just load up the ones uh, that I'm using at the time. And there's many solo instruments and, and rhythm section instruments that some arrangements I won't use at all. So there's no need for them to be loaded. Um, and this just saves a lot of hassle and a lot of um, worry about CPU overload and all that sort of stuff. So I really recommend that getting yourself a template with purged samples uh, and actually all the contact instances turned off as well for your template because you don't need to have them on, you don't need to load them up. So this is the clarinet. It sounds really great. You've got vibrato on the on the mod wheel. Lovely. Um, you have sustains, you have shorts. got a great tone it works really well there is a clarinet in swing more um, but this has so much more to it um, as you'll see you have the flutter option down here if I take that up really cool and then our kind of multiphonics as well and uh, definitely something that would um, more often than not come up in a jazz arrangement so this has really been my go-to for clarinets recently um, it works really well. You also have an ensemble mode. There you go. Um, and you can choose the number of players there if you only want the two. And change the time in between them. Make it a little bit less rigid. Perfect. Um, so it's really great. As I say, that's there just in case for me to duplicate and kind of create a section out of as and when it's needed. And that is my woodwinds, my reed section. Um, and they work really well together. The flutes really work well with the, the tenors, because it's often I will double the kind of tenors and flutes with um, muted trumpets, trombones, that sort of sound. Uh, and the clarinet works really well with the, with the other reeds too. So I hope that's given you a bit of an idea of the, the reed section and the sort of sounds that I'm using there. Now we're going to very quickly look at the key switch situation. And this um, applies to all of the sections, so that I do this with the trumpets, the trombones, the solo instruments, and some of the rhythm section, but not all of them. So here I have a MIDI track here. If I play, it will actually play all of the saxes, um, but it will also 
play the key switches. And that's sending MIDI to every one of the saxophone tracks from that one track, if that makes sense. So um, I record my key switches on that track. They don't mess up the MIDI on the saxophone tracks. And then when I'm putting this out to Sibelius or a notation software, it isn't taking the key switches with it. It's just taking the pitches and the rhythms. Um, and I find that's so much easier, so much quicker um, to just export this into um, like a music XML <clears throat> file and to take that into Sibelius or MuseScore or wherever you do your typesetting for your scores. Um, and I'll look a bit later on at how to set that up. Um, it's a lot of steps kind of involved in the MIDI environment, which is a, quite an advanced part of Logic. Um, but essentially, that's all it is doing is it's sending MIDI to whichever ones I pick. I've got a Saxes key switch in there to the four saxes and a Barry key switch going to the Barry. Um, and it's just to keep things a little neater, just keep the key switches out of the way of the score bit of my exporting. Um, I don't have one for the clarinet and for the flutes. Um, the flutes don't have any key switches uh, other than um, kind of playing phrases and things and a couple of the articulation changes. Um, so I haven't felt a need to, but it's very simple to set up and I could do if I needed um, and the clarinet's there for now, as it's just temporary. I've just left that alone. But the sax is <clears throat> much, much easier. I can play my section, um, write my section, arrange the four saxes, and then decide on the key switches for the articulations afterwards and just make them all line up perfectly with all the saxophones. Very, very handy. Um, so top tip there. So that is the read section. Now, what I'm going to do is just play you a little section of... Um, kind of this virtual section playing together, swapping out between clarinets, flutes, saxophones with uh, some rhythm section backing, just so you can hear how they work um, almost in isolation and hear how um, they're all playing together and fit quite nicely in the room. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next uh, few and as we move our way through the section and find the rest of uh, the sample libraries I've been using. There's plenty more to come. Thanks for watching.